Welcome back to another video on The Noble Chemist. Today we'll be having another cool kitchen chemistry video. So we'll be making calcium carbonate for some acid-base reactions. Now did you know that you can make your own calcium carbonate? So what you need is three eggs, you need a boiling pot with water, or rather a pot with boiling water, you need a coffee grinder, and then also an oven. So watch the intro and then you'll be on your way ready to make your calcium carbonate. See you then. Okay, so now that you have your calcium carbonate, you saw the intro. So what you had to do is boil your eggs for your eggshells for let's say 10 minutes and then put the eggshells into a tray in the oven for more or less 15 minutes. After that, you'll just um, bang them with a hammer and then grind them um, until they're like a very fine powder. So now that you have your calcium carbonate, you can now continue with your experiment. So let me quickly show you on my tablet what we are going to do in this lesson. Okay, so just to quickly revise, we are looking at the properties of acids and a few reactions that acids undergo. So when acids dissolve in water, they produce hydrogen ions and that's why we say they are proton donors. So the reactions that we will be looking at today is the reaction of acid with metal. So in this case, we are working with hydrochloric acid in all the three reactions that we will be considering. Then we are going to take aluminium as a metal. We will be using sodium hydroxide as our base and our metal carbonate is the calcium carbonate that we have made from our eggshells. So just to quickly look at these reactions, when you react an acid with a metal, you get a salt forming plus hydrogen gas. When you react an acid with a base, you also get a salt forming with water. Now remember that the salt is initially um, in solution, but as soon as you evaporate the water off, you can form your salt. And then lastly, when you react your metal carbonate with acid, you also get a salt, plus you get carbon dioxide gas forming, and you also get water as a byproduct. So let's quickly look at the salts that we will be preparing today. So when you react aluminium with hydrochloric acid, the salt that you will form is aluminium chloride. So remember aluminium is in group 3 on your periodic table, so it has a charge of plus 3 or um, a val it has 3 valence electrons and chloride is in group 7 and therefore it has a charge of minus 1. And therefore when you write the formula, that's what it will look like. Okay, we're also then going to form hydrogen gas with that and you'll see that in one of the experiments that I will show you. When you react your hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide, you will form sodium chloride, okay, and water. And then lastly, the calcium carbonate with acid is going to form calcium chloride. Remember, calcium is in group two. Chloride has a charge of minus one. So you have a calcium chloride salt forming plus carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so let's quickly jump into the experiments and see if we can prepare these salts. Okay, so let's start with the first experiment. So we're going to take a beaker and to my beaker I'm going to add hydrochloric acid. This is diluted hydrochloric acid. So I'm just going to add, let's say 25 milliliters. Of course, this is not very accurate. The purpose of this lesson today is not to show you how to work out stoichiometric 
uh, ratios or grams of certain salts that I'm preparing, but the goal is just to show you that you can actually prepare salts from certain acids and bases. So to your hydrochloric acid, you are now going to add your calcium carbonate. So remember when we refer back to our reaction equation, remember that what will form calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid will form calcium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. So we expect to see a lot of effervescence in this reaction because of the, uh, the carbon dioxide. So let's see if that happens. Okay, you can see definitely a lot of carbon dioxide being released from this reaction. So you're going to swirl around your solution and in fact you're going to add more and more and more of this calcium carbonate until all the bubbling stops. The reason why you want all the bubbling to stop is because you want your reaction to be complete. So for this reaction to be complete you need to ensure that your calcium carbonate is in excess and that your hydrochloric acid is therefore the limited reagent. So you'll see I still have some bubbles forming here. So I'm just going to add some more calcium carbonate. Okay, so I can see that the bubbling has stopped and you will see that there is some solid at the bottom and that is your unreacted calcium carbonate. So now that you have your solution, you are now going to filter this solution and um, prepare your calcium chloride solution. So I need to quickly grab a piece of filter paper. Okay. So you just pour it in and you will see that there's still going to be some excess calcium carbonate remaining at the bottom and now you just let it filter and do its job. This is going to take a while and you'll see at the end it's going to have a nice colorless calcium chloride and water solution forming at the bottom and what you will do then is just leave this overnight or leave it for a day in the sun and eventually the water will evaporate and you will have nice calcium chloride crystals forming um, around your flask. So I'll show you guys my crystals as soon as they are ready. Okay, I'm now going to move on to the next experiment where I will be using a strong acid and a strong base and thereby making my sodium chloride salt. So this is just using a normal titration method but for the purposes of this experiment, I'm not going to do an actual titration. I just want to show you guys the color that the phenolphthalein changes with a sodium hydroxide solution. And I just want to show you then how to prepare a salt using a titration method. So, of course, when you do a titration, you don't do it like this, right? You use a pipette to accurately measure all volumes. Okay, for now, for the purposes of preparing the salt, I'm not gonna be as accurate. It's not necessary. So I'm just gonna add my indicator, a few drops of phenolphthalein. And this now, I'm going to use my burette to transfer my sodium hydroxide into my Erlenmeyer flask. So remember, guys, that you need to always be safe, put on your safety eyewear because some of these chemicals are corrosive, especially sodium hydroxide and also hydrochloric acid. So I'm now going to do my titration, a very rough one, and I just want to show you guys the color change that you can expect to see when you're adding a base to your acid with phenolphthalein indicator. So you will see the more base I add to this, the more the color changes to a pink color and then it quickly then fades away. So you're just going to keep on doing this until the pink remains for much longer. You can see there the color stays for a while. And then from there on you're just going to add drop wise 
you don't want to really over titrate but for the for the purposes of preparing a salt it wouldn't make a difference you're still making your sodium chloride remember that the titration is just to neutralize your acid okay you can see that we are very close so i'm just going to add one drop at a time swirl my flask around and wait for that permanent color change Okay, we are very, very close. I think one drop away. Okay, if you over titrate, you will see that the pink color will be very dark. Then you know that your solution is more basic than acidic. Okay. So, Okay, so there you have it, your titrated um, acid. So you can see that this is slightly over titrated. Um, it's a dark pink shade and not necessarily a light pink shade. Um, but because I wasn't actually doing a titration, um, you have to work very accurately if you would like to work out the volume and the concentration and the mass of the salt that you are preparing. You can also see this is an exothermic reaction. As you can see how the water um, condenses against the sides of the flask. So exothermic reaction, it heats up and you can feel the surroundings are heating up. So you're going to now take your solution. So what we've made here in this here right now is sodium chloride solution with water. So sodium chloride and water. So you're just going to pour it into your evaporating basin. And you're going to leave this in the sun or leave it overnight and you'll see that the water is going to evaporate and you will have nice sodium chloride crystals forming uh, in and around your flask. So what is um, sodium chloride? Remember that it's table salt, but this is not the type of table salt that you would eat. Okay, table salt is much more purified. So this is experimental table salt. So you're just going to leave it and wait for the crystals to form. For my next experiment, I will be moving over to my aluminium metal. And I'm going to react that with concentrated hydrochloric acid. Now, concentrated hydrochloric acid is very corrosive. I have been working with it for quite a while now and I prefer working without gloves because when you do spill it on your gloves you might not note how it burns your skin. So I am very accurate and very careful with it but please guys don't ever try this unless you are a very experienced chemist. So essentially what should happen now if I add my concentrated acid to my metal it's going to form aluminium chloride salt and also hydrogen gas. Now, hydrogen gas you can test. And the way that you test for hydrogen gas is by using a wooden splint, a lighted wooden splint. So I'm going to light this just after I've added my acid. And what's going to happen is it's going to make a pop sound. Now this pop sound might be a little bit louder because my metal is a little bit larger. So let's hope for the best. I'm just going to put away my tablet. Okay, and for in case. Okay, then I'm going to light this so long. And then you're going to add your concentrated hydrochloric acid and you will see that it's going to start bubbling vigorously. You can also see some gas released and if you put your wooden splint there, maybe with time the more hydrogen gas comes out there, it's going to make a pop sound. You can see there's a lot of gas coming out now. There it goes, I'm <laughs> getting a bit of a fright there. Okay, did you hear that pop sound? I really hope you did. 
So now you have a lot of hydrogen gas coming out here. Let's just wave some of the fumes away. And essentially what you now have in here, you can feel this beaker is really, really hot. Okay, this is definitely an exothermic reaction. You can also see the water condensing on the sides of the beaker. So what I have in here now, and you can see it's a gray color, is my aluminum chloride solution. So I'm going to do the same now with this than with the others. I'm going to leave it overnight um, or put it in the sun and then the next morning you will see aluminium chloride crystals forming um, on the sides of your flask. Okay, so you can see with certain acids and with certain bases you can prepare whatever salts you want. And you can even combine certain salts with certain acids and form a desirable product. Uh, you will see in one of the future lessons that I will be doing, we are also going to look at salt preparation again, just revise what I've done today, and we're also going to uh, look at um, precipitation reactions and predict, based on the reactivity of metals, what type of salt you will form. So now I'm quickly going to jump over to the tablet and just show you a few reactions with bases, but this was what we had to do today with our acids. Okay, so we looked at the different salts that we formed, we made aluminium chloride, we made sodium chloride, and we also made calcium chloride. We tested for hydrogen gas, but what we did not test for was um, the carbon dioxide. So if you want to test for carbon dioxide, you need lime water. And normally what will happen with lime water, the color will go from colorless to milky. And you will see that lime water is basically just um, calcium hydroxide, that has been dissolved in water. So moving over to my bases, um, just to review um, a quick reaction, or quick reactions. So the base and the acid was exactly the same as what I have done with my titration. So if you had sodium hydroxide and you reacted with hydrochloric acid, you formed sodium chloride and you formed water. With a base and a metal carbonate, so let's say my sodium hydroxide and my calcium carbonate, the salt that you will form is going to be calcium hydroxide together with carbon dioxide together with water. And this is the calcium hydroxide that you can then use um, in the presence, if you can isolate that, you can then use that in lime water to test for your um, carbon dioxide. And lastly, if you have a base, let's say sodium hydroxide, and you react it with an ammonium salt, so let's say you have ammonium nitrate, something that you normally find in fertilizers, if you react that, you will form a sodium nitrate salt together with ammonia gas, together with water. Okay. There's a reason why I didn't do this one, because ammonia um, is very corrosive and it tends to burn your nose as you inhale it. So that was what we looked at today. Remember, bases um, are proton acceptors and that acids are proton donors. Okay guys, so thank you for tuning in with me with this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please like and subscribe for more cool kitchen chemistry videos and for more videos to learn this cool chemistry. So I hope to see you guys again soon and remember to watch my next lessons if you want to see how these salts turned out. Thank you guys.